Now, um, I want to lend my voice to the discussion we want to have concerning um, if Jesus has saved us, then we are saved forever and we cannot lose our salvation. Or if Jesus has saved us and we do the wrong things, we might lose that salvation. Please pardon me. I've been teaching since morning and uh, my voice is not sounding too good. But I hope that you'll be able to get what I'm trying to say, even as bad as my voice is. Now, I want us to divide the Bible into the three places that make up the Bible. So we have the Old Testament, starting from the book of Genesis, down to the book of Malachi. Over there we have God um, speaking to various people, using various prophets, and um, one of the major ones he used was Moses, um, a descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and um, he set many laws, and uh, in those laws we have the killing of animals for the atonement of sin, and um, and we have so many laws that if you break so, some of those laws, um, you are to be killed instantly. So if a child is disobedient, it's to be stoned to death, um, and many things like that. And that was part of the Old Testament. Then we have the New Testament that is broken down into two. The first part of the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, talks about Jesus who is the creator of heaven and earth, and who is, the, who is actually the New Testament. Actually, the New Testament is Jesus. So we have the teachings of Jesus, the instructions and the lectures and the lifestyle, the birth and the death of Jesus in the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Then after you have that, you have the rest of the New Testament, which is what the apostles did, called the Acts of the Apostles, and letters written by the apostles, letters written by Paul, Peter, John, James, Jude, and a letter that Paul wrote to Brother Philemon, and, um, you know, then we have Revelation. So we can divide the Bible into three places. We have the Old Testament uh, from beginning to the end of the Old Testament. We have the New Testament broken into two. We have Jesus and others. Jesus and others. I need us to understand very clearly that now before Jesus was born, there are certain ways things were done. And we follow that way. It was the way of Moses. It was the way of creating um, altars of stone and offering sacrifices to God. It was the way of over 400 laws that Moses gave. That was the way before. Then Jesus came. And um, the last time God spoke from heaven and were able to hear on earth was when Jesus came. And that we can find in the book of Matthew chapter 17, verse 5. Matthew chapter 17, verse 5. That was the last time God spoke audibly from heaven and man could hear God. Praise the Lord. Um, so in the book of Matthew chapter 17, verse 5, he said, While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of heaven, out of the cloud, which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. The last time God spoke very audibly from heaven, and human beings could hear his voice, was on the Mount of Transfiguration, where God said, This is my beloved Son. This is Jesus my beloved son, hear ye him. Now, there were three men at the Mount of Transfiguration. And I might, I might please beg of you to read that Matthew chapter 17, starting from verse 1. Um, that was when Jesus took uh, Peter, James, and John up to the mountain. And when they got up to the mountain, Jesus uh, transfigured before them. 
and uh, we could see Moses on that mountain, and we could see Elijah. Now, I want you to note with me that it wasn't a coincidence. The reason why when Moses died, they couldn't see the dead body of Moses was because God hid it for a purpose. The reason why the chariot of fire came to carry Elijah to the sky was because God hid his dead body also for a purpose. Why did God hide it? God hid it because God needed it in future. Because God knows a time is coming when in the world today we'll be confused who to listen to. Should we listen to the laws of Moses? Or should we listen to the prophets? Or should we listen to Jesus? We'll be confused. So God intentionally eat their bodies in those days. And now, um, when it was time for Jesus on the mountain, God brought Moses. So standing in front of disciples, they had Moses. Moses represents the laws, all the laws of the Old Testament. Every law, Moses represented it. Elijah represented the prophets. Because he was one of the old prophets. So he was one of the prophets. And God brought the, the body of Elijah to represent the prophets. And we now have Jesus. So we have three options to choose from. Who should we listen to? Should we listen to Moses? Or should we listen to the prophets? Old and new? Or should we listen to Jesus? And God spoke from heaven. And said, This Jesus... Is my beloved son. Hear ye him. So what is God telling us? The final instruction for a Christian does not come from Moses. The final instruction from a Christian does not come from a prophet. Whether old prophet or new prophet or living prophet or dead prophet, your instruction does not come from a prophet. Where does your instruction come from? The last time God spoke and told us to listen to somebody, it was Jesus that he asked us to listen to. So the only person we can listen to for instructions about our lives is Jesus. Now you're going to ask me, are we saying that the pastors are now useless? Are we saying that the prophets, and the ministers of God are useless? No. What we are saying is this. If a pastor is saying something... It has, he has to back it up with Jesus. If Jesus did not say we should do that, then we are going to disobey that prophet. Because we cannot obey what a prophet says apart from what Jesus said. It has, the prophet must be telling us what Jesus said. If the prophet is telling us something else apart from the instructions of Jesus, we are going to disregard it because we have not been given instruction to obey him. I you know the next time a voice will sound from heaven, and human on all ears, human ears will hear it again, will be the rapture. So no prophet can come and tell us that he has climbed the mountain again, and God has now said, this is my beloved prophet, hear ye him. That time has passed. God has intentionally designed it in such a way that he has brought us three choices. Is it the law of Moses, is it prophet, or is it Jesus? And he gave us the final instruction and said, Jesus. So, if Brother Paul, who is also a prophet, who is an apostle, if Brother Paul wrote, writes something, Brother Paul is writing a letter to other people. It's just like in 2,000 years' time now, after maybe in year 4,022, maybe they've even enlarged the Bible, and they've added some other letters to it. And maybe they've discovered that I, because I like writing, discovered that, oh, Brother Femi has written so many things. Let's add this letter. So he say, Brother Femi's letter to the Nigerians. It will be the same level. My letter in the Bible, if it's, add, if it's added to the Bible, will be the same level as the letter of Brother Paul. Because Brother Paul is just an ordinary brother. He's a human being. He's not Jesus. He did not die for our sins. He is not uh, the savior of the world. <laughs> He's just a brother Paul. But Peter is not our savior. He's just a brother Peter. Brother Peter, on the last day, we stand in the judgment. Brother Paul, on the last day, we also stand in judgment. 
But at John, on the last day, we only stand in judgment. The only person that will not stand in judgment, rather will be the judge, will be Jesus. So, if Jesus said something, and made me by Paul trying to explain it mistakenly or erroneously, said something different, who are we going to pick? The last person that God told us to listen to, and that is Jesus. If Brother Paul said, God so, um, if Jesus said, God so loved the world, and everybody that is my own child is my sheep, and Brother Paul said women should shut up and not talk in church, who are we going to listen to among both of them? Are we going to listen to Brother Paul, or are we going to listen to Jesus? We're going to listen to Jesus. Because why? The last time God spoke from heaven, the person he told us to listen to was Jesus. And that's why we need to break the Bible into the three compartments. We have the Old Testament, we have Jesus, and we have the other New Testament. So when you are taking instruction, how do I live? Uh, what am I supposed to do? How is my salvation? We are not going to listen to the Old Testament. We are not going to go and start taking our Bible quotations from the, from the letters and the Acts of the Apostles. Where are we going to take it from? From Jesus. That is the final instruction we have. But that Paul, but that Peter, but that John, but that Jude were trying to explain further what Jesus has said in, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Every other thing that we saw was the time to explain or try to show us how they lived the instruction that Jesus gave. So our key instruction on any matter is Jesus. Because he is the only one who will not stand in judgment to be judged on that day. He is the one that will judge every other person. So for everything that Brother Paul has written, Brother Paul will stand in judgment to defend what he has written. Maybe the Holy Spirit is telling him write A, and in his zeal he decided to write B. It's going to be between him and Jesus. He's going to be judged. Maybe God told Brother Peter, write 17 letters, and he decided to write just 15. He will stand in judgment and explain to God why he wrote 15 out of 17. Everybody will stand in judgment. That's what we see in the book of Revelation. Everybody will be judged. The only person that will never be judged, rather he will stand and sit in the seat of judgment, is Jesus himself. So if you are wise, <laughs> if you are very wise and you love yourself, you will decide that I would rather listen to Jesus, who is going to judge me, than every other person. Because Moses himself will stand in judgment. <laughs> So I hope I'm able to understand, uh, explain to that aspect. So my, my, by answering the question on whether your, uh, your salvation can be lost or once you are saved, you are saved forever, I'm not going to look at whatever Moses has said. He's not my savior. He did not, he did not die for my sins. I'm not going to look at what Paul has said. He's not my savior. He did not die for my sins. I'm not going to look at what Peter has said. He's not my savior. He did not die for my sins. The only person I'm going to listen to is Jesus because I call myself a Christian. I am not a Paulian. I'm not a Peterian. I'm not a Johnian. I am a Christian. I am a Christ I am now. I am a Christian. I'm, I'm a Christian because of of Jesus. So whatever Jesus says is what I am. Do you understand very well at this point? Now I can't get your response because I'm recording this here. But I hope you'll be able to understand what I'm saying. So let's quickly look at what Jesus has said on this matter. In the book of Matthew chapter 25 verse 14 down to verse 30. Matthew chapter 25, verse 14, down to verse 30. We saw a story that Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven can be likened to a, a man who had his own servants. Please, I want you to know that these servants were not strangers. These servants were already in his house. These servants are with him already. They are not strangers to him. They are already together living in his house. He gave them talents. He gave one five, he gave one three, he gave one one. The one he gave five went out, used the talent that, God, that his master gave him and got five more. The one he gave three used the talent that got three more. The one that he gave one did not use it. Rather, he kept it. What is the result of this error? 
he said in verse 30, and that, okay, yeah, he said, and cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Jesus is saying the kingdom of heaven, which we are, which the race we are all in now, in the kingdom of heaven, we are all in the race to enter the kingdom of heaven, which is in heaven. The kingdom of heaven is in heaven, it's not on earth. But we are praying that let thy will be done on earth as it is in your kingdom in heaven. But the real kingdom of heaven is in heaven. That's why Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. For in my father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would never have told you. Jesus does not tell a lie. So he has gone to prepare a mansion for us in the kingdom in heaven, in his father's house. And he's saying that the kingdom of heaven, that my father's house in heaven, can be likened to a story of a master who gave talents to his children, to his servants. Who are servants? Who are the servants? They are dwelling in the master's house here. But because one servant was unprofitable, that servant was thrown out. The master, Jesus did not say, because the master was kind and merciful, he now let the unprofitable servant to sit in the house. That was not what he said. He said, I threw him out. Throw him into darkness where there will be gnashing of teeth. Have you forgotten that in the presence of God there is fullness of joy? And God himself is light. So when you throw somebody out into darkness, what have you done? You have excommunicated the person from God. The person was in the house of the master before. Now the person has been thrown away forever. This is Jesus, who we call ourselves Christian, who is the foundation of our Christianity, to whom we hold anything called Christianity, saying here that if anybody is unprofitable in my kingdom, I'm going to throw that person out. Of course, Jesus, the, the Jesus that was talking here, he knew, was going to, he knew the reason why he came to the earth was to go to the cross and die for our sins. He knew that that was the reason why he came. It's not as if he was talking here. Then later he now got to know that, oh, I'm to die. No, he already knew that he, is, he has come to save us. And the man who has come to save us is telling us that if any of you is unprofitable, even after becoming my servant, if you remain unprofitable, I am going to disown you. And I'm going to throw you out. That is the salvation I have brought. I will deny you of it. I will reject you. That is the Jesus who owns the Christianity talking here. Now let's go to Matthew chapter 7 verse 21. Matthew chapter 7 verse 21 to 23. Matthew chapter 7 verse 21 to 23. It says, Not everyone who saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. It says that in verse 22, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name I've cast out devils, and in thy name I've done many wonderful works. And then will I reply unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you work out of iniquity. Now this is not this this has gone beyond just being saved as a Christian. What Jesus is saying here is because Jesus did not say these people used um juju, um diabolic, devilish sacrifice to perform miracles. That's no. He said they prophesied with his name. So these guys were not only saved, they got the gift of prophecy. These guys were not only saved, they were able to perform miracles. They cast out devils, and they performed miracles in the name of Jesus. And they did wondrous works, big things. They did it in the name of Jesus. They used the name of Jesus to do great works. And what did Jesus say? We tell them, I don't know you. Ah. If we are once saved and forever we are saved, Jesus, who came to buy our salvation with his own blood, should not be saying this. He should just tell us that no matter what you guys do, I am here for you. I came to die for you. And um, I'll be waiting for you all. But this is the person who came to die for us, who loved us more than we love ourselves, telling us here that even pastors will lose their salvation. They will end up in hell because he's going to deny them on that day. 
Many will come to him and say, we, are, we cast out demons, we prophesy, we do this, we do that. And Jesus will simply say, you are a worker of iniquity. I do not know you. Now I want you to understand that Jesus was, Jesus is very intentional. You know, Jesus created the heavens and the earth. He created language. Jesus did not make mistake when he was saying it. <laughs> And the person that wrote it, Jesus ensured that he wrote, he wrote it well. Because this Jesus coming, the coming of Jesus now was prophesied by God himself in the book of Genesis chapter 3. When, my, when Adam and Eve sinned, God said, The seed of the woman shall bruise your head, and the serpent shall bruise his heel. That was when God had prophesied that there is a seed of a woman coming, not a seed of a man. That's, what, that's why we know that Joseph is not the father of Jesus. He's just the physical father. His palm did not give birth to Jesus. The only person that carried Jesus as of a mother was Mary. And God had already said it 4,000 years ago that the seed of the woman is coming to bruise your head. So Jesus coming has been prophesied 4,000 years ago. Now that Jesus cannot come. Then somebody wants to write the story of Jesus in Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and still make a mistake. No, God has prepared it all this while. So that a word was not a mistake. He says you are a worker of iniquity. Jesus is saying here that even if the pastor is able to escape sinning, he did not steal another person's wife, he's not a thief, he's not committing adultery or fornication, he has just one wife as Jesus has taught us, he, uh, you know, he has, he's not a murderer. Jesus is still saying, I still expect more. Because iniquity is different from sin. Sin is when you break the law. Iniquity are, is when you are not doing things right. Iniquity is when you don't do things correctly. There are things that Jesus has said, do it like this, do it like this, do it like that, and you have ignored. And you have said, well, I did not commit fornication as well. I did not steal another person's wife. At least I'm not stealing church money. At least I'm not, uh, I'm not fraudulent. I'm not giving fake prophecies. At least I'm not, uh, you know. Uh, you see, that you did not do it right. The way I taught you to do it, that I did not do it. Because of that, I reject you. Such a person, while on earth, He's performing miracles, but he has lost his salvation. The person did not know. The person thought, ah, we still make it to heaven. Until the person got, and Jesus said, Jesus did not say, uh, few. If you look at Matthew chapter 7, verse 22. Matthew 7, 22. He said, many, many will come. Not few. Not one, not two, not three. Not 300. Many. And this is where many ministers fall in. That's why it is dangerous to believe that once you are saved, you are saved forever. Where do you get that from? When Jesus, who came to buy the salvation himself, is telling you clearly that on the last day, I will reject many people. They will come to me and say, I don't know you. Yes, we won't say, but you have lost it somewhere along the line when you allow the iniquity into your life. And to go further, in John chapter 8, okay, in John chapter, in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24, Matthew 7, 24, 25, and 26, he says that anyone who heareth what Jesus is saying and doeth it, then that person is a wise man. Ah, I thought Jesus Christ came to die for our sins. I thought he had carried everything. He is now saying that I have, say, I have some sayings that I have said. There are things I have taught, I have instructed, there are instructions I have given. Now, anyone that hears the instructions I have given and do it, that is a wise man. But the one that reads my instructions and refuses to do it is a foolish man. So there are instructions from Jesus. Jesus has not come to live. Now, this is, I want you to look at it very well. If Jesus does not have any instruction for us, he doesn't have to gather 12 disciples and start teaching them. Why should you teach people again? You shouldn't teach them. Just call them and tell them, I am the Savior. I've come to die for your sins. Call my name and be saved. And after that, go to the cross and die. Why do you have to use three and a half years teaching people the new way? 
teaching them what forgiveness on the, what forgiveness means. Teaching them that just looking at a woman you have committed sin. Teaching them that when you call a brother uh, a raka, an animal, you have committed sin. Teaching them that when you when somebody uh, asks for one, give him two. Teaching them that you are not supposed to carry your works. You, you can't. Keep words to yourself. You need to help the poor around you. Why did he spend so much time teaching if he's not teaching us because he wants us to do it? Then heaven must be foolish for sending Jesus to the earth to come for three and a half years, teaching, 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 teaching. Why will he, God, a Savior, come to teach if he's not expecting us to follow that teaching? Why will Jesus... Um, come to the earth and spend time showing examples if he doesn't want us to follow that example. If you just want to come and die. I mean, if you just come to die for us, go to the cross and die. And, and we will all just call your name and we are free. Why did he come to teach us? Because he wanted us to follow his instructions. He wanted us to follow his commandments. There's a place in the Bible that says, I think in the book of John, or in Matthew, that says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. That's Jesus speaking. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Commandments means law. It means instruction. So Jesus did not come to make us lawless. He came with his own laws. He's now saying that if anybody obeys those laws, that person is wise. But the person that did not obey it, hears it, reads it, and did not do it, that person is foolish. And finally here in John chapter 8, verse 33 to 35, some people came to meet Jesus and said, Oh, we are the seed of Abraham. We are children of covenant. We are covenanted children. All these things you are saying does not concern us because we are of covenant. Jesus answered them and said, oh, I say unto you, whoever committed sin is a servant to sin. And the servant does not abide in the house forever, but the son abided. What is Jesus saying here? He told them that you think you are connected to Abraham does not mean anything again. If you sin, you are a servant of sin. You are a slave to sin. The same thing works with us there. If you come to God and say, Jesus, I have given my life to Jesus. I am not a sinner. Jesus has washed my sins. I am not a sinner. I am beyond sin because Jesus has come for me. Jesus, the one who came to die for you, said it clearly. If you commit one sin, you are a slave to sin. Just commit sin and you are a slave to sin. And he says, a slave does not abide in the house. A slave is thrown outside. A slave of sin is a sinner. Jesus did not say, Oh, if you sin, you are a slave to sin, and you are a sinner. But just call my name, and you will not be a sin again. No. It says, if you commit sin, you are a sinner. A sinner is not saved. And a saved is not a sinner. Now, the question you will ask me is, is it possible to live without sin, brethren? Yes, it is. That's why Jesus said, I will send you the Holy Spirit to teach you in all things. That's why the Bible says, the just shall live by faith. That's why the Bible says, those that are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. So it's possible to be led by the Spirit continuously. And when the Holy Spirit is leading you, he cannot lead you into sin. The reason why we are still falling into sin is because we are not allowing the Holy Spirit to lead us. We are not giving the Holy Spirit the chance to lead us. We are leading ourselves. We are leading ourselves into sin. God has released the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is available. If you surrender to the Holy Spirit totally, it will help you to live a life above sin. We have many people who are living without sin. So when you hear people say, yeah, no, but everybody is a sinner, it's a big fat lie. Unless you are telling me that God is so poor and the Spirit of God is so useless that it can't help anybody. Unless you are telling me that. And that would be that would be dangerous, you know. That would make you an unbeliever to believe that Jesus cannot make you overcome sin. That would, that would make you an unbeliever. And, and such a person is unsaved, naturally. That person is yet to be saved. Because the Bible says in John 3, 16, that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him 
shall be saved, shall not perish. Whoever believes in him, you must be able to believe what Jesus said. Jesus said he has come to help you to overcome. Jesus said anyone that commits sin is a sinner. And Jesus said he has come to help you. He now said he's going to send the Holy Spirit who will teach you and comfort you in all things. So if you are believing that you cannot overcome sin, you are saying that Jesus told a lie. He can't send the Holy Spirit. If you are yet to overcome sin, it's not because Jesus cannot help you to overcome. It's because you have not allowed the Holy Spirit to take over 100%. You are still doing some things yourself. You are still helping yourself yourself. That's why the Holy Spirit is not there to help you. You can actually overcome sin. In its entirety, you can overcome sin. Because once you sin, you become a sinner. A sinner is not saved. And the saved do not sin. <laughs> it's allowing the Holy Spirit to help you. So I will, I will close it up here and just finalize by telling us that if Jesus, who came to purchase our salvation with his blood, says that you could have been saved and yet you will not enter heaven, then we're going to take Jesus as the final instruction. So no matter what a prophet says, no matter what a pastor says, and no matter what uh, Moses have said, that, that is not the person that God asks us to listen to. The last time God spoke about listening to somebody, it is Jesus. Every other person that we read of in the Bible shall be judged. The only person that will sit on the throne and judge every other person is God himself. And we have God in Trinity. We have God as the Father, we have Jesus, and we have the Holy Spirit. They will sit in judgment that day. Whatever they say is final. Whatever human being writes can be questioned. Whatever Jesus writes is final. So we're going to listen to Jesus on this matter. He says that you could have been in the house before, and because you're unprofitable, he will throw you out. That person has lost the salvation. He says that if you are, once you sin, you are a slave to sin. That person has lost his salvation. He says on the last day, many ministers will come and say they perform miracles and he will tell them, I don't know you. What has happened to that person? Though the person got saved somewhere along the line, iniquity has made the person lost his salvation. So we should go back to God now. If you have lost your own salvation, you need to go back to God and settle yourself with him. Then ask for the Holy Spirit to help you. You need to start afresh reading the right things. Many of us know about Moses, we know so much about Paul, and we know so little about Jesus. So little about Jesus. We have skipped the instructions that he gave. And once we skip the instructions of Jesus, unfortunately, that makes us foolish. If you want to be wise, we'll go back to the instructions of Jesus. So I pray that God will help you to follow his instructions in Jesus' name. God bless you. I hope um, I've been able to lend my voice for you to understand that once you are saved, you can lose it unless you obey and follow the instructions of Jesus. God bless you.